I'm going to talk about uh, research infrastructure to process available data to improve healthcare. Thanks. So, and this is supported by Rarosina's project. And I'm Nivedika. I'm working as a software engineer for the Hive. Uh, so, before I start to dive deep into Radar CNS, I would like to take a minute to talk about uh, the Hive. So, the Hive is an international uh, software company who tries to support pre competitive collaboration, especially in the field of life science research, by leveraging open source software. So, we are very happy to be here on this day to talk uh, about a few products that we are working with. And a few of the products that we actively contribute are Transmart, CBIO Portal, ITB2, Galaxy, Odyssey, and Rare CNS, and many more. So the core values of the companies are to share and reuse the open source software tools that are openly available so that some other partners with the same problem don't have to reinvent the wheel. And we also try to provide some specialization support for com um, customers who want to have some additional requirements fulfilled. And we are more than 40 people in, with an uh, interdisciplinary background and currently we are based in three different locations. And the three main health data areas we are actively focusing on are transformational research data, where we use Transmart and CBIO portal projects, and product, uh, population health data and uh, personal health data, where we are trying to process variable sensor data, which is the project that I'm going to talk about. So what uh, Rare Data CNS is about? So we all know there are... Um, large number of patients who have been affected by chronic diseases. And the way the patient care is delivered to them is basically based on what the doctor or the caregiver receives from the patient. And to the improve the way the patient care is delivered to the patient, we want to allow continuous monitoring of patients. And how we are trying to do that is by doing remote assessment of patients using wearable technologies and mobile technologies which is currently widely used by a major population of patients. And later on, try to identify some uh, biosignatures from the data we collect, and then try to use these data and the decision we make from them to predict and prevent relapses. And the main disease areas we are trying to focus in radar CNS are major depressive disorder, multiple cellulosis, and epilepsy. And the strategies of Radar CNS project are first to devise a pipeline to implement uh, remote patient monitoring using existing remote uh, measurement technologies and to devise a platform that has a generic data management platform that can be later easily extended to any disease areas. And Rare CNS is an IMI-funded project, which has public-private partnership between FBI and European Union. And currently, there are 23 organizations who are actively contributing to Rare CNS from different work packages. And these are the partners of Rare CNS. As you can see, there are pharmaceutical companies, universities, and the Rare CNS really aims to bring experts from various backgrounds, such as computer science, engineering, IT, healthcare, clinical, clinicians, all of them together to improve the uh, quality of patient life. And of course, this is an open source conference, and I would like to take this moment to thank all the developers who have been actively contributing to the to build the Rare platform. Um, Okay, so as I mentioned that we want to allow continuous monitoring of patients and to do that we have to collect and process data in real time. And how we are trying to do that is by using Apache Kafka and with the help of Confluent platform which is also open source. So Apache Kafka is a uh, real time stream processing system which basically works uh, using pops up uh, messaging architecture uh, if you know what it is. So basically what uh, you have to do is you have to publish some data to certain topics and there will be consumers who will con consume the data from a particular topic. And uh, Apache Kafka is really scalable, especially in both the number of clients it can support and also the type of clients it can support. 
so the uh, Kafka integrates with all the external systems such as sensors, mobile applications, social medias, what have you, and uh, exports this data to external systems such as databases, data warehouses, or anything that you want to, however you want to get the data out of it. So, um, well, there are a few technical terms that I will be using in the rest of the presentation. So the, the clients who will produce data into the system are called source connectors, and the clients who will receive and extract data from the system are called sync connectors. And all the data we collect in Rare CNS project are formatted using Apache Avro. Apache Avro is a data serialization system which heavily relies on schemas. So any data that we collect in Rare CNS has a schema in it. So you don't really have to worry about what's the structure of the data because the data has the metadata of the data. So it's uh, self-describing and it's also quite compact and fast. So what you see here, is an example of a, a schema that we are using in Redder. So all the sensor data we are collecting in Redder has a key, uh, key and value, and what you see here is the schema of the key. So this is the high-level architecture of the platform. Um, I will not go in detail in, of each and every component. So what you see here in the green is how you, are, you integrate with external devices. And this, uh, ba this is based on plugin-based architecture. So um, what you have to do to support additional devices is to simply extend the de device middleware by implementing four to five classes, and then you can automatically uh, publish data into the platform. And the blue part is really the core backend of the platform, which receives and processes data in real time and store them in two different storages. And later on, the data that we store in the platform are exposed using in REST API, which where um, external users can go and query easily. And there is also a data visualization component where you can monitor the data and the activities in real time. So the data collection in, uh, in the Rara platform are mainly focused in two different ways. One is passive monitoring and the other one is active monitoring. So passive monitoring is mainly based on the variable devices where we don't have any interaction with the patients. So patients would wear the devices and we will continuously receive data from the variable devices. And active monitoring is based on events. For example, for a particular schedule, a patient had to go through and fill a questionnaire or go through some disease-based test that can help us to identify the behaviors of a patient. And we also use the active monitoring app to provide some feedback to the patient. Then the data storage and the data processing, which was mentioned in the blue part in the architecture diagram, so the data processing and storage is divided into two main categories. We have a cold storage and a hot storage. So cold storage stores almost all the data we collect in the platform. And the main purpose of the cold storage is to do support retrospective analysis using high resolution data. And the hot storage provides near real time overview of the data. So as you may wonder, the data that we collect in Radar CNS is really high res resolution. So what we try to do with hot storage is to calculate an aggregated value for certain windows and store them into a MongoDB. And then this data is exposed using REST API. So you can also get an overview of what's happening in real time, or, and then you can also get the whole data uh, in raw format for retrospective analysis. And the data monitoring and visualization is supported by the Radar dashboard. This is how a particular view in Radar dashboard would look like. And this dashboard integrates with the real time data that's exposed using REST API. Then you can also have like particular view that focuses on specific aspects of the study. And what you see is here is the study progress where you can basically see how a particular study is um, functioning. And yes, yeah, security is one of the main concerns that we have to consider in a, a patient study and how we are trying to handle it is using this uh, management portal. So management portal is not just for user management, it also provides device management and 
subject source assignment, which means which devices are assigned to which patients. And uh, the security of the platform uh, really depends on the management portal because it is the point where uh, the identity of the patient and the devices are managed. And we also provide role-based access levels, so all the data access points are protected using uh, whether this user is an authorized user and whether they are allowed to use specific applications. Uh, and we also provide an additional security to allow uh, the devices from particular device type to so, uh, stream into the platform. So we make sure that the, vita, the data we get into the platform is valid. So one of the use cases of rare CNS is um, epilepsy. And we are using a golden standard of epilepsy patient monitoring where you have uh, EEG and video and variable data monitoring in an in-hospital setting. And currently, it is deployed in King's College in London. And the uh, study is going really successfully. And the path in green is what we are trying to cover using radar CNS. So yeah, the openness of radar. What do we exactly do with the data we are collecting using the platform? Uh, so what we are trying to uh, do or what we envision to do with the data is to make this data fair. I'm sure all of you know what fair is. Uh, so how we are trying to achieve this by uh, implementing an open source, open data repository for the data we collect using RADAR. So I'll, let, I'll explain how we are trying to achieve these uh, properties of fair using a radar platform. So first, to make the data findable, we, um, as I said, we are using Avro schemas for every data we collect. And radar is an open source project, as well as all the sch schemas of uh, radar that we are using uh, is also open source and is publicly available in, in GitHub. And all the data that we collect are well documented. Uh, so the data that we collect is really supported by a rich metadata. And um, to make the data accessible, we, of course, we have the data, open data repository, and we integrate all the data we collect to the uh, repository. And we also have a systematic uh, data sharing mechanism where the data will be shared to authorized users who, uh, who have access to a particular patient or even a particular device of a particular patient. And to make the data interoperable, the Avro um, plays a huge part in it. Avro is really interoperable. It is human readable because of the schema, and it's also machine readable. So you can basically use it in any environment you have. And we are trying to follow some code books using some of the standard that are actively used in uh, remote patient assessment. And Radar also help you to collect raw data. So I would argue that also provides interoperable data where you don't really have to depend on any of the algorithm from external parties. And to make the data reusable by having this open data repository, users can go and request for this data again and again. So this data will be stored and reused with more than one end users. And we also try to collect the data provenance, which means the metadata of how the data is collected, to whom it is shared, how they use the data, and et cetera. And this is something that's work in progress and under discussion. So uh, lastly, the, the additional unique values of radar is, and it, it is open source, it's available. And, in Apache to license, um, and it helps tries to help you to get out of the vendor lock-in, uh, and it's extendable. The architecture is really modularized, and you can extend it very easily to support additional devices, and it also supports real-time um, live data analytics using Kafka streams, and. Yeah, the system is really scalable where you can have it in deployed in a single machine or in a cluster. Mm, and that's it. And I would like to acknowledge uh, the King's College London and Janssen Pharmacology, who is organizing the project, coordinating the project. And that's all. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me or tweet it to this address. Ad